Hello and welcome to our online Eucharist for this third Sunday in Advent. We're pleased that you're able to join us today. Break forth into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. So we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. This week we light the third candle on our Advent wreath, the pink or the rose candle that reminds us about our reason to rejoice for joy at this time of the year. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can hide. So let us pray. Eternal God, as the darkness beckons closer and the night time lingers on, we light a candle to dispel the darkness of our hearts and chase away the shadows of our minds, so that he of whom John the Baptist spoke may find a bright and clear path and find us ready and willing to welcome him, the light of the world, for he is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. And in the light of these candles, we continue in prayer. Jesus Christ, light of the world. We pray for our communities, darkened by the threat of the virus. Bring peace to the fearful, hope to the despairing, and strength to those who mourn. We pray for those on the front lines, in shops, services, and hospitals, that you keep them safe from harm. We pray for those who are sick, that you would strengthen and heal them. In the darkness of our current season, give us your light. Jesus, all power and authority comes from you. So we pray for our governments in Westminster and Cardiff, that you would give them wisdom, that their decisions would be for the good of all and not coloured by selfishness or greed. We pray for the most vulnerable in our world, those who live without shelter, without food or without safety. May we and all who seek to help them be your lights in our world. Jesus, you are the head of the church. So we pray for your church throughout the world, that in this Advent season, we will be strengthened in hope and expectation. We pray for our Bishop Cherry, and for the lo those who lead us in this ministry area, that we will be led faithfully in your ways. Lord, hasten the day of your return when you will gather your church from all corners of the world to yourself to rejoice in the glorious light of your presence forever.
Amen. The voice cries in the wilderness, make straight the path of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, you call us to prepare for the coming of your Son. Forgive our unreadiness to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were proclaimed by John the Baptist. Help us to prepare your way. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you speak through the prophets. Make us attentive to hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we've avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we turn to our collect and our readings for today. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, and then verses 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not question the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This week we're continuing to spend time with John the Baptist. We started thinking a bit about last week. It seems that he's gathered quite the following. Indeed, we heard in our Gospel reading last week that people from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem are going out to him and were baptised. So naturally, the religious establishment want to find out what's going on. So they send a small party out to the bank of the Jordan to size him up. And they come with their own ideas about who he might be. Jerusalem and the whole of God's people are pregnant with eschatological expectation. They're expecting the end of the world to happen soon, any day now. So they're on the lookout for key figures who will mark the beginning of the end. The Messiah, Elijah, the prophet. So the delegation comes to ask if he's one of these figures. And John rejects them all. And if you know your passages about John the Baptist well, it may strike you as a little odd that he rejects the mantle of Elijah. As later on, Jesus characterises John as this very person, as fulfilling precisely this role. Now, perhaps John doesn't see his role as this significant. From what we know of his character, that's perfectly possible. His whole goal is to prepare the way and then fade away. But perhaps, much like Jesus, he rejects the expected titles such as Elijah or the prophet to avoid confusion of his message. Either way, the religious delegation, having had all their ideas about who he might be rejected, and press him further to define himself. They don't want to go back empty-handed. And John takes for himself the words of the prophet Isaiah. I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. This is an image taken from Isaiah's prophecy about the return of God's people from exile. A call to straighten out the road through the wilderness to the east of Israel, to smooth over the dunes, fill in the valleys, 
to open it up so that God's people can return safely and freely. John the Baptist is calling God's people back to himself, back to their homeland, but now in a more metaphorical sense, not back to a physical place, but to a spiritual one, back into the arms of God. And Jeremy spoke a little about that last Sunday. But it's the image of the wilderness that caught my attention in today's Gospel. If God called you to preach to those who are far from him, those who perhaps have wandered off, where, where would you go? A nice warm venue perhaps, like a, a church hall or a meeting room? Perhaps out on the high street where the people gather, like some people do in our day? Perhaps in the church building where you have the support from others? I'm guessing that out in the wilderness is the last place that you'd pick. But the wilderness is a harsh place, a barren place, a place that if you have to go through it, you're trying to do so as quickly as possible. But this is precisely where John sets up camp. The wilderness becomes a metaphor for the state of the people coming to him. They're spiritually dry barren, they're struggling, they're, they're far from God. Now for all our modern day society does to present itself as a veritable paradise, when we stop, when we slow down, we realise that even for all the trimmings, it's a wilderness. Even with all the distractions that our consumer society offers us so many distractions, even with all of that, we're still hungry, we're still lacking. The lockdowns due to the ongoing pandemic has provided us with some much needed clarity about what's important, what really matters. Friends, family, uh, those little things you do with and for one another. But we need to go more fundamental still. Traversing a, a desert with companions is better, perhaps easier, but it's still a desert. The world is surviving off scraps, little glimmers of what could be, but that don't last. The wilderness of our world is the haunt of jackals that threaten to tear us apart, be it addictions, past regrets, ongoing troubles. We live in a world desperately in need of hope. A world that looks like those words from our first reading today from Isaiah. Oppressed, broken-hearted, captive, mournful faint in spirit. A world in need of the wonderful news that there is, in fact, more to life than this. John the Baptist starts as a lone voice, but soon there are more. The Samaritan woman, the disciples, the crowds, an ever-widening circle of people pointing to Jesus, pointing to the one who can help, the one who can satisfy our longings and needs. And now, as the church in our day, we too join their cry. In the wilderness of our world, we're to be the ones who point people to the oasis. We don't have the answers ourselves, we're not the solution, even though we may often wish or act like we are. No, we're one group of beggars telling another one where to find bread. So let us go into the wilderness, join people in their mess and their brokenness, and in doing so, don't offer yourself or your own answers, or even the world's answers. Offer them Jesus. He's 
all that we have, the very best that we have. And he's the only one who can heal and restore them, the only one who can satisfy their deepest longings, perhaps the only one who knows what they really are. But perhaps as you've been listening, you feel cute, acutely aware that you're in the wilderness today, far from God, far from hope. Maybe you're a Christian watching this who feels um, far from God. Perhaps you've never known God for yourself. Either way, may I offer you some Advent hope today. There are two places that God regularly meets with his people in special ways. The mountaintop, think Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, or, or Jesus at the Transfiguration. The other place is the wilderness. Moses having fled into hiding, having killed an Egyptian fearing for his life, finding God in the burning bush. The ancient Israelites being led by God through the wilderness to the promised land. John the Baptist baptizing people, bringing them back to God. We like the mountaintop meetings, don't we? They're high, they're, they're glorious, they're exciting. But we'd rather avoid the wilderness meetings. But so often it's the wilderness meetings that we're so desperately in need of. John the Baptist's life is like an icon of what happens in Jesus, in God the Son. John, God, John leaves the comfort and security of society to brave the wilderness, to bring people back to God. But in a few weeks of Christmas, we celebrate the one who left the comfort and security of heaven, the one untouched by anything we experience here on earth. He left that and joined us in our wilderness so that we can come back to God. So when all is lost and we're roaming the desert, God comes to us. We don't need to hunt for him. We don't need to muster all our strength to hike up the mountain to find him. Jesus comes to us here, in the desert, in the wilderness. And today I know he's longing to reach out to you, longing to meet with you, wherever you're at. So in the week ahead, and as we approach Christmas, look to Jesus. And in doing so, I pray you might become a modern John the Baptist. Out in the wilderness, pointing people to Jesus. The one who has walked among us, knows our fears and longings and weaknesses. And who offers us life in its fullness. The one who fulfills those words of the prophet Isaiah in our first reading, who binds up the brokenhearted, who liberates captives, who comforts the mournful, who brings the faint spirit to burst forth in praise. It's a message our world so desperately needs. And it is Jesus who promises that at his return, waters shall break forth in the desert, green shoots from the barren earth. Jesus is coming to make all things new, that we may rejoice with him forever in an earth bountiful with all good things, where we may at last see him, the, the true object and, and source of our desires, see him face to face. Amen.
And so let's affirm our faith as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who live in darkness under the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. And please, if you are with somebody, do share a sign of God's peace with each other.
We celebrate together the gifts and the grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. True and living God, the source of life for all creation, you made us in your own image. Always and everywhere we give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this season of hope, his light dawns in our hearts, for he is the morning star, the day spring from on high, whose light destroys the shadow of death and scatters the darkness of sin. The word through whom you made the world is close at hand, establishing a new creation when all will be made manifest. And now we watch for the day when Christ will come again, with justice flowing like a river and raining down peace upon the world to raise us up to live with you forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, almighty God, because on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he'd given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant of my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, recalling now the sacrifice of Christ your Son, once for all upon the cross, and the triumph of his resurrection, we ask you to accept this sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that we may be fed with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with his life and goodness. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace, that we may do your work and be his body on the earth. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto you for evermore, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom, as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, 
Give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The blood of Christ, the fruit of the vine. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. So let's pray together. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh